Uh, chunking a chip, it is the most frustrating thing you can do in golf. You've hit two shots, two really good shots. You're up by the green, maybe on a par five. You're ready to chip up and tap in for a birdie, and now you've chipped the ball two feet. Well, whenever I see somebody come in for lessons, they're always doing three of the exact same things when they're struggling with chunking the chips. I'm gonna show you how to solve this once and for all and get to the root cause of what's really causing this. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so when we're struggling with chunking chips, there's three things that are happening. But first, let's get to what is the actual cause of this and what's happening as we're coming into contact. You can imagine my forearm here is the ground. Anytime my club is coming steeply down into the ground, I'm gonna struggle, struggle chunking because if I don't hit the ball in the ground at the exact same time and pair that up with great hand-eye coordination, I'm either gonna chunk the ball or I'm gonna hit the ball thin and it's gonna shoot all the way across the green. So what we have to do is we have to shallow this angle of attack out. So your club should actually be coming down into the ground. It shallows out and there's a nice wide zone where we can make contact, probably a three to four inch zone. And if we use the correct technique, just like you're seeing with all the pros, I could actually hit behind this ball, make contact with the ground, a good two or three inches behind the ball. My club's gonna be coming in so shallow, it's just gonna brush through the grass and I'm still gonna get a dead solid chip shot. Or I could start about an inch in front of the ball where my club hits the ground and I'm gonna get good solid contact there. So I've got this nice window, this big margin for error that I can hit in. So first let's get to, now that we understand what's going on there, let's talk about what's actually causing this steep angle of attack and how we can get rid of that. The first thing I see, and I see this all the time, almost every single person that comes in is struggling with chipping. They've been told to put the ball back in their stance. So now my ball's back here on the inside of my right foot and they've been told to get some forward shaft lean like this. Now what happens when I'm doing this, you can imagine my natural arc of this club, the bottom of the arc is gonna be somewhere up here toward the left because my weight is slightly left as I'm chipping. And if I have my weight left, I've got the ball back, big forward shaft lean, now I'm chopping down into the ground very, very steeply. That works out okay if you have that perfect hand-eye coordination and you're hitting the ball in the ground exactly the same time. That's almost impossible to do. I don't know anybody that can do that time after time after time. So if you're doing that technique and you're already chipping pretty well, that's great. That means you have really, really good hand-eye coordination, but that's not the easiest way to do that. So what we need to do first is we need to go ahead and put our ball a little bit more forward in our stance. So it's off about the logo of my shirt or my left ear. This is pretty much gonna be where the ball is for all of our full swings when we're hitting off the ground. Now you can imagine as my club is coming into the ground, because my weight is a little bit left again, the bottom of that circle, the bottom of that arc is gonna be just in front of this golf ball. So now instead of chopping down like this, we've leveled this out. Now the second piece to this that really makes a difference once we get the ball up here is we need to have forward shaft lean and we need to have what I call flat compression. So that, that club is moving into the ground and having that flat spot that I talked about. So how we're gonna do this is we have to have forward shaft lean and as my club gets closer to the ground, you can see that my handle's leaning forward and the club is almost touching the ground at this point. From here, what happens is the handle actually turns back up a little bit and as my club releases down, that creates a flat spot. So my club gets close to the ground and it brushes across the turf for a good six to eight inches on the ground when we're chipping. So it's coming in and it's going this six to eight inch level flat spot as we're doing that. So again, that can only happen if I have forward shaft lean and then my club is turning up as my, or my, my handle is turning up as my club head is releasing. We're gonna do this for a couple reasons. Our arms and hands are naturally gonna be swinging back up if we just let them rotate you know, completely uh, comfortably. Plus my left shoulder is gonna be rotating back up. So we're just allowing the hands and the arms to turn back up like they should, and that's gonna flatten out that angle of attack. So if I go ahead and do this, we'll do a couple close-ups here, and you can see how my club is brushing through the grass on a nice six to eight inch area, and it's not chunking down into the ground hard at all. So those are the, the two biggest areas I see with people coming in too steep. Now the last thing here is really, really common, and I think we've all heard this before, but it's good to remind ourselves of the basics. I wanna make sure that I'm not decelerating. So as I take this club back, I don't wanna go way back here and then slow down as I'm coming into the ball. That makes the face really unstable, and I could chunk or hit it thin. I'm not gonna be very consistent. I wanna have a nice even backswing and follow through. That way I can get that good contact. So if I put all three of these pieces together, ball a little bit forward, a little bit of weight on the left. 
I'm gonna have that flat spot as my handle turns back up a little bit, and I'm gonna make sure that I accelerate through the ball. That's gonna get us those nice, clean strikes. And you'll notice there, as I hit that ball correctly, there's absolutely no divot. I'm coming in so level with the ground. I'm clipping the ball with good forward shaft lean, but I'm not taking a divot as I'm doing that. So good luck to you guys. Work on those three keys, and I guarantee you, you'll get rid of the chunks forever. Oh, almost made that one. All right, so now that we're gonna be able to chip it close to the hole, it's very important to have a lot of club head speed and get close to the green so that we can birdie those par fives. I've got a great video for you that's gonna go over the number one lag mistake in golf. It's absolutely free. It's gonna play here in a second. Just click the link on the screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device and you'll be able to see that entire video absolutely free of charge and pick up your club head speed. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button below and hit subscribe. That way you'll see our latest videos, including Swing Speed Saturdays. I'll see you guys soon. Hi guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag. And then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case. And I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag.